Hey everyone, Van here. Welcome to the next episode of Mellowbrook Road, except it's not exactly the Mellowbrook Road this week. That's right, this week we're doing something a little bit different, not because we had scheduling issues or anything, but this week we thought it'd be a fun idea to introduce you to some of the other shows that we have on the Mellow Brick Road Network, MR, MBRN or MBN, however you want to say it, doesn't matter. Uh, over on our Patreon show, our show is uh, Mellow Brick Road on Patreon, uh, pa patreon.com slash Mellow Brick Road, you can find them all there. Uh, we have our book reading show, What You Reading, where me and Trace uh, will, every month we have our books that we've read throughout the month, we come in, we give little summaries of them, we talk about them, what we learned um, you know, just subject matter, stuff like that, and we're, and we want other people to give us their recommendations of stuff to read, and we're hoping that we're giving you some recommendations as well that you would enjoy. And also, uh, something we added into that show the last few months is every month I will read a banned book, a book that is banned somewhere in the U.S. or, you know, once was banned, and, you know, we, I'll read it, we kind of talk about why it was banned, the reasoning behind it, why it's kind of silly that it's banned, if it's still banned, if it's not banned, Kind of like stuff like that. So that way uh, people even have opportunities to find books that they're not really supposed to read, but those are usually the best books to read. Um, and most of the books, if not all of them, that we do read each month are all available on Hoopla. I'll put it right here. Hoopla. Uh, it's a it's connected to the public library system of the U.S., so you just got to get a library card, uh, and you get a little number on the back of the card, and then you put that into Hoopla, the app, and you have access to millions of books, millions of movies, TV, audiobooks, comics, manga, uh, all these, all, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's a great resource for learning and reading in general. Anyway, that's not the show we're talking about today. We're not doing that show today. We're doing the other Patreon show that Mellowbrook Road does. That's with me and Mason. It's called Off the Path with Van and Mason. I'm Van. And Mason's not here, but he's usually, he's usually here uh, next to me. But so that you'll see him in a few minutes. That's where it's going to be on. I, I won't take a few minutes. I promise it'll be very fast. Um, but yeah, off the path. It's basically just uh, Meadowbrook Road. We take our paths. Uh, we walk down them. We have kind of our our uh, milestones that we hit along the way. Off the path is kind of like if you were walking on a trail and then you just took a hard left into the woods and you fell down a hill, uh, rolled for a few funny seconds, and then you got up, looked around, brushed off the sticks and the dirt. And then you just kind of kept walking in a random direction. Uh, that's kind of how Mason and I do the show. It's pretty random. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we'll just go ahead and get right into it. So next week will be path number 85 for Millerbrook Road. But, you know, let us know what you think of Off the Path. Uh, if you like it, we'll post more episodes. Well, it's, right now, it's, the video is only available on Patreon. But if you guys enjoy this video, uh, let us know. And we'll adjust accordingly. All right, let's get into the show. I'll stop rambling. Uh, let's get into Off the Path with Van and Mason. Take it away, boys. Are you going to cut? I saw okay. this joke the other day. I can't remember who said it or where it was on. It was on TV. It was like one of those like panel shows, I think. And the joke was, it's a chicken and an egg. Mm -hmm. They meet up for the night, like a Tinder date situation. Okay. They sleep together, and at the end of the love making, the okay. they're both laying back in bed, and the chicken smokes a cigarette. Oh yeah, says, I like that. They go. Well, I guess that answers that question. <laughs> Who came first? Yeah, I guess it, it didn't really answer the question, but yeah, no, yeah, we don't really know the full story there, but someone um, came first. And yeah, someone well, had to. You feel like the, with the chicken saying it it means that the egg is the one that came first. Which is weird, though, because... I don't Isn't know. That like... It's like incest. I was going to say pedophilia, but I guess, yeah. Well, I guess it, it, it could not have been that chicken's egg, I guess. I don't even know so how So it wouldn't be incest. It would be pedophilia. Ah. Uh, yeah. There it is. Welcome welcome to the show, talking about pedophilia again. <sighs> I wish we wouldn't have started that way, actually. I just thought it was a funny <laughs> joke when I first thought of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I tend to go off that path sometimes. Hey, that's the name of the show, <laughs> Off the Path. Yeah. Mason and I are super tired today. We were hanging out oh, last yeah. night. We are dead tired. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Off the Path. I'm Van. I'm Mason. That's what's Mason up? over there. Mason, our house uh, antiques collector. 
Mason Greenwell. How you doing, Mason? Collecting your antiques. How's that going? Oh, yeah. It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. You know, a lot of people say that it's really difficult to keep uh, all their antiques. You know, people. it's been, like, kind of going down in popularity because people find antique uh, kind of, like, falling out of fashion. Like, they feel like they're out of touch with some of the, like, you know, the old stuff, you know, like, mm -hmm. you look back at it and you're like, ooh, that's kind of like a, ooh, that's a rough image now. I don't know how people would enjoy that now. So a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, either are getting rid of their antiques or just hiding them basically so like kind of what you do with your conventional oven you could just hide it so if someone finds it they could burn it up so no one knows you actually had that antique collection yeah and so that's, that's what i wanted to ask you at the start of this because i want to know mr mason how do you keep the fiery love that you have for your collection of nazi memorabilia how do you if i may ask how do you keep it from feeling out of touch in the modern world and also if i may what's your favorite piece of the collection that you have over the years because you've collected a lot of nazi memorabilia i mean you are it was almost a problem <laughs> we almost had an intervention about it last night but you're, you're <laughs> so passionate about history and i respect it because a lot of people would a lot of people would have said you know what 2024 europe just did that big anti-fascism thing i'm not about this anymore People look at me weird when I walk around in my SS uniform around town to get milk. <laughs> First I don't know off, why you do that. <laughs> First off, it's just it's just World War Two. Oh, stuff. Okay, but it's like specifically German. There might be there's some German stuff in there. I guess. Yeah, I didn't realize it was such so large. Some Italian uh, stuff. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, Not there's just a German. Right, there's a lot of European stuff in there. Yeah, you know? it, Italian, uh, German. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all it is. It's just, it's just Hitler and and that one that, that Italian guy, Mussolini. Um, yeah, my favorite pasta dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty good <laughs> pasta. Balls of Mussolini. <laughs> oh, uh, back God. to cannibalism too. I, oh, I didn't <laughs> check even, and check. Oh wow! Yeah, there we go. Check and check. I didn't even mean for that. You pulled me, in, it just you pulled goes me there, into man. the cannibal. It cave, just man. always goes there. You pulled yeah. me into the Nazi cave. I did. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Well, you can't get out. I of would the much cannibal. rather be in your cave. Yeah, I would too, actually, because then you could be eating Nazis. Well, that would, probably wouldn't be good, though. I don't know if eating Nazis. Nah, would it'd be probably good. be. Uh, yeah. It'll. Yeah. Uh, never mind. No. You got Nazi. Uh, what do you call this? Sch schnitzel. Yeah. You just take a Nazi and you pound it real flat, deep fry it. Yeah. A lot of spices. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh wow. Okay. So we're here off the path. Van, Mason. We already did that. Uh yep. this is gonna be a weird episode because normally to find these episodes, you gotta go on Patreon or it's just on, you know, without the video is hard to find. Uh you gotta go on Patreon for that Mellowbrook Road on Patreon. Uh but this week. Uh, with a weird scheduling thing we have going on because half of the show of Mellowbrook Road is responsible for, you know, loved ones and, and little baby things in their family and jobs and whatever those are. Uh, 2024, hashtag no one has a job anymore. Uh, and so I thought it'd be fun this week to kind of like merge our shows together uh, once so that everyone can kind of get like a sneak peek, see how off the path goes. You can tell it's very professional. You know, we're here, we're here on time. We know we don't have to keep leaving the chair to get stuff. It's great. Uh, we're oh, on top I, of it. I today. leave the chair a lot. Yeah, we're on top of it. Uh, and so, yeah, this is just kind of like a little sneak preview of Off the Path. If you guys enjoy it, you can join the Patreon and watch the shows. Or you can just check it out on Spotify uh, and other podcasting apps. If you, if you enjoy it, you can keep listening. Let us know if you like it. Uh, those will be a little email right there. Uh, or you can just let us know on um, social media and all that stuff too. Yeah. Okay. Great. Rubbing all, right. all that, rubbing all that awkward intro out of my hands. Let's get into the yeah. show. Uh, this episode, I wanted to do some like improv sort of things. Thought that'd be kind of fun. Okay. Uh, kind of like these aren't. I mean, I guess these are improv, but it's more of just like. You try to convince me of something, and I try to convince you of something. That's kind of the game okay. we're playing right now, okay? Okay. So for this first one, 
I want you to try and convince me that the world is flat. Uh, I'm going to give you five minutes okay. to do that. Five minutes, like starting right now? Starting right now. Okay, so definitely, it's definitely not a possibility, or it's definitely not not a possibility, right? So not not a possibility. So I mean, because what proof do you have that the Earth is even in a sphere? What what physical evidence do you have? Do I have? Yes. Um, satellite images. Satellite images. Yeah. Okay. Do you at? So the satellites, how are you seeing these images? Like, where do you go? Just like the government's websites and that's what they're, yeah, they're on? Yeah, NASA okay. and stuff, yeah. Okay, yeah, and definitely the governments can be trusted. That's 100% true that I, we all I know that. I firmly believe that. Right. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, there's actually not a lot of actual photographs of Earth. So most of the time that the satellites are taking these images, they're actually submitting waves. And so these waves are just like hitting whatever, right? But when it comes to a magnetic field, you know, that could throw the waves off. So repelling them to make it look like a sphere. Submitting so waves, what does that mean? So I think satellites uh, read things in like infrared or some kind of ultraviolet. Mm. Um, and so that's how they used to detect like gravitational waves or something like that. I don't know too okay. much about that part, but... Um, so when it comes to the, uh, to the mag, that thing I was just talking about. Three and a half minutes. Yep. Okay. So, so what can you physically show me though, to prove that earth is not flat? Earth I mean, not flat. I, I, uh, I could show you a, a boat coming toward land from like the horizon. You see like the top of the sail first. And as it gets it's closer, like it like rises up like that, because of the curvature. Is that the curvature, or is that just a difference in, uh, like warmth, like in a difference of air temperatures? Because mm -hmm. that can definitely play a part in, uh, kind of your visuals. And True. if it's such a long distance away, I mean, is it always going to be flat the entire time? Isn't that? what that means the world is flat you know what you know how i can easily debunk this right now okay. the world's yeah. not flat because there are mountains oh i guess and oceans, and oceans so it's not flat it's technically so not flat everyone's yeah. saying well actually they do say if you took the earth if say the earth is a globe let's just say it is for this right. scenario i'm about to say they said like even with like the, the mount everest and the marianas trench mm -hmm. as the highest and lowest point if you shrunk it down to the size of a tennis ball the earth it would be the smoothest material yeah. known in the universe because it's like the size of it compared to like mount because like you look at the earth from those satellite images you don't see like a giant spike coming out of it from like everest that would be cool yeah but that would be cool yeah uh that one that one was kind of hard though i don't i don't believe the earth is flat at all so it's uh Okay. The hard okay, then, this then. okay. Give me the benefits of living in a cave. Benefits of living in a cave versus yeah, just modern to, society. Try to sell me the benefits of living in a cave. I didn't say that. I just said living in a cave. Okay. Okay. Well, so here's the thing about cave living. First yeah. off, it is a perfect shelter for just any any kind of environmental whatever so you know just like common weather or nuclear fallout hmm, hmm, mm, possibly there's true. a lot go, of go underground yeah yeah most caves have some intricate cave system so if you find a good enough cave that goes down pretty far it might be inhabited by some other creatures but you know at that point nuclear winter has already happened so you are now trying to fend for yourself but you can have the support of your allies in the cave. And then once you guys form this community, yeah. you guys will run the new world and become the leaders of that new world after this nuclear devastation. Okay, so this is like a fallout sort of situation you're saying. And it's also cool to just like have and like show your friends too if that doesn't happen. Like, hey guys, oh, yeah. this, just... well, this is my cave. And then it's like, yeah, you guys heard of a man cave? <laughs> Here's mine. This is a cave. 
Yeah. Just to make it. I built it out of metal. Yeah. I was about to say. Yeah. But uh, no, dude, honestly, cave living would be kind of cool. Um, I would like it a lot because I feel like it would be kind of colder and uh, True. definitely it would be a little damp, but that's nice for the uh, for your lungs, I think. Uh, no, I mean, living in a cave it doesn't seem that bad. Cave living doesn't seem that bad as long as you get like electricity down there or not. I guess it, that's your prerogative on the mm-hmm. modern society living in or not would be colder um yeah i would like to have some lighting in there for sure um earthquakes might be an issue but actually earthquakes? I, don't, I don't know i mean you're within probably the you're within the earth but most of the th- most of the shit when like earthquakes is like the buildings and structures fall but you're also in a cave that's probably in a mountain. And so if that shakes around, I'm sure it's going to knock some stuff loose. Good yeah. point. Smeagol's walking around in those caves in the mountains. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. He's going to try and find you. He's going to think you have the ring. He's going to make you do riddles for him. And even if you don't have the ring, he's going to kill you if you lose the riddles. So, like, you got to deal with that. Yeah. There's not sure. a whole lot of food in caves. There's not a lot of food in caves. I mean, you're going to be... It's going to be a lot of moisture, so you won't drown or you won't uh, dehydrate. True. Yeah, dehydrate. That's true. Um, but yeah, probably won't be a lot of cave. You're probably going to be eating a lot of like uh, bugs, uh, like moss or algae, probably. Um, bugs, rocks. Yeah, a lot of bugs and rocks. Yeah. I mean, though, but there can be some cool stuff. Like, there's, like, a whole subsect of, like, alligator or crocodile in some country now because there's, like, a like a small inlet that goes into this cave system mm. that these little, like, alligators and crocodiles, whatever the the animal is, one of yeah. those two, though, um, can go into as, like, a small juvenile, but it cannot climb back out once it's in there. And so enough have gone into this case system, I guess, that they've kind of evolved, and now they're just, like, completely different. I mean, different yeah. enough from, like, their original versions, and they're all, like, small and uh, this nasty brown color. and mm, Yummy. Yeah, it probably bats? doesn't taste that good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, bats are cool, though. Bats? Like, Yeah, I wouldn't want to eat a bat, though, but, but you, they definitely help a, out with the bugs. If you're living in a cave, you'd have to. I guess. Yeah. You don't have to. You want to really, we can go back to our normal conversation and say that there's other people in the cave too, probably that could be eaten. But would you eat the bats first? Probably. You'd eat the bats. I would try food. a bat first. I would try a bat first. And yeah. if it didn't taste good, all right. All right. All right. That's it. That's it. Steve, come here. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Thank God. Just end it. I can't eat more bat. Just take me out. <laughs> yeah. Eat me, please. And she's like, guys, let's, let's wait a full day first. I'm like, all right. Living in a cave. Interesting. Maybe. Interesting. Maybe. I would do it. I'd vacation would, in a cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd Airbnb. I'd I'd have a vacation cave. Yeah, my house and my vacation cave. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. And you know what? My, if you have, if I have a vacation cave, I might as well have a summer house as well. So that like during the winter months, I stay in the summer house, and then in the summertime when it's too hot, I stay in the in the cave. Mm-hmm. That would, it stays nice and cool. You just have this house, and then just in your backyard, you just have like this mountain, just like this. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I have a mountain on one side and a beach on the other. Nice. Yeah, they're all, all my houses are right next to each other. Nice. Uh, okay, let's see. How about this one? Uh, what would you do for a birthday party for a 200-year-old person? For a 200-year-old person? 200 years, what would you do for a birthday party for that? Mm, or for them? I think I would do a full chrome party. So it's like you made it, dude. It's the future. Future. And you make yeah. them do that. You make them go on the yeah. ground and do that. And then only play techno. Like dun <laughs> Uh but yeah, no, I think that'd be a really fun party. Or I would do like the complete opposite and do like something back from the eighteen hundreds, I guess. Oh, oh yeah, like their like their original birth. What everyone <laughs> yeah. was doing for that. That'd yeah, be kind of like, fun. Yeah, it's like, hey, you remember how much you like cake? Well, you didn't have that back then, so here's some. Uh, here's the ingredients. I'm sure they had cake back then. Yeah, probably, but 1800s? definitely not the, definitely not the uh, good frosting nowadays, though. Oh no, 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 no! It was probably just like a the savory. cream cheese frosting, probably like a savory cake. Probably wouldn't even set sweet. 
No, it's probably like carrot or something. Mm, I do like carrot cake though. Mm, I don't know. It wouldn't be carrot cake like how carrot cake is now, where it's just a spice cake with like little bits of orange shit in it. Yeah. Which I don't even know. I, I doubt that's even carrots. No, probably not. I don't think I've, I probably have never had a carrot cake in my life that actually had carrots in it. Probably not. Now that I'm thinking, I don't about know. It. I don't know. Maybe they all do though. Surely they still have to have some carrot in there, or else they couldn't call it carrot cake. There's all kinds of food that they like. They're called one thing, but like legally, you can't call it that because it's not <laughs> that. I can't think of. There's one that's like like a, oh um, uh, sweet potatoes. Like when you get sweet potatoes in a can, oh, it's a yam. It's a yam. It's not even a potato. Yeah. It's like bullshit. That's like something I saw with the um with the Mandela effect. What is it? Mandela uh-huh. effect? Mandela? I call it Mandela. I don't know if that's the. I think Mandela the is the correct is the South African person. Yeah, this guy. is who it's based off of. But Mandela, I think it's called the Mandela effect. No, it's based off of Nelson Mandela. No, it, but it's oh, Mandela are those like circle looking things in India. Oh, those I geometric don't know. like cool design pictures. Yeah, it is the Mandela effect. You're right. Um, because the whole thing's based off of him dying in prison. Yes, and he he actually did not. Um, it's uh, one of those things where like oh, I forgot what we were saying. Uh, Man, Mandela, Mandela effect. Mandela. Yeah, but what, what were we what were we just saying before that? Ugh, future like, the, old the timey future. carrot cake. Um, carrot cake. Yeah, people used to believe that there was carrot in the cake, but they don't make it like that. Anymore. Oh, sweet potatoes and, and they, yams. They, yeah, so they it's one of those things where uh, the Mandela effect, like the whole thing of like they change, like the elites change history. Yes. So it's different than what you think, like what they do with critical, critical race theory. And mm, the yeah. reason that's not working for them to get rid of that in history is because it's too big of a thing. And yeah. it's also pretty recent uh, than that whole stuff, like civil rights and all that. And so... The there's this theory on the Mandela effect that what they do is they the elites really they're testing to see how much they can manipulate our reality without us noticing, and so that they start with small things like Berenstein Bears, Bernstein Bears, like oh let's just switch the A and the E, see what happens. People notice it, but there's like ah whatever ah maybe I'm just thinking maybe I just thought it was something else. That's so crazy. I told you about the Fruit of the Loom story, didn't I? Mm-hmm. The lady thought it was the cornucopia, and then even the company was like, nope, never had that on a logo. And then she looked through her old clothes, found that logo. It existed. And everyone in the world was trying to tell her it didn't exist. And yeah. so that's what they do. It's like they're, they're, they're slowly making small changes to reality to see how much they can manipulate us so that eventually they can make a big change. And some people won't even notice it. And other people will notice and go, oh, maybe I was just thinking of it the other way. Oh, yeah. whoops. I just forgot. It was like this. It's uh, creepy. I don't like that. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't like I, it either. Every time I see Mandela effect now stuff, it freaks me out because I think of that. And it's just, yeah. I just say both are right. That's not how reality works. <laughs> that's not how in, reality works. Uh, I mean, in all realities. Subjective reality, that's how that works. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess you're yeah. right. Try to tell that to Schrodinger. He was an animal abuser. No, that's thank you. true. But in some realities, he wasn't. Good point. There's at, a good point. At one instance, he is and is not at the same time. We all are. Or Until are you not. open the box, and then if the cat's dead, it's like, oh yeah, he is. It's like particles. You don't see them change, or quantum physics. You don't see the change. By looking at it, you Mm -hmm. looking at it is what causes the change. So you already missed it. Yeah, dude, that's a fun thing in like the double slit experiment or whatever. Yeah, fourth dimensional stuff. See, like we know things. Yeah, it's just not like it's just not practical for our lives. Yeah, we don't know any practical things, but we know really cool things that are like like global life changing things as a whole, but like nothing that benefits us like directly, except for this. Right podcast of course we do. yeah of course so. yeah uh, okay last one i want to do this one Hold could on. be a doozy pause okay Foods here okay gotcha 12 seconds later and resume uh okay i got one more that we can do okay this one is uh two people arguing over whether or not ghosts are real 
Oh man, I just had this argument. Oh shit. Okay, which side were you on? They were or weren't? I real. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I'll go. I'll go against you then. Okay. Just learn something about this. Okay, you go. Start. You start. How are they real? You hey, dumb dumb. They're not real. Dude, first off, you have never had an experience if you don't think it's real. Because I've had an experience where I've felt something, someone, something staring at me or some presence looking over me for an entire night. And I will never forget how that made me feel. It made me feel scared. It made me feel terrified, dude. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything until the morning. And then I slept like a baby. But yeah. it is, it's, I'm not sure what makes it, but there's definitely something for sure. Paranoia, sleep paralysis. Moving on. You got trauma. No! In your life. You got trauma in your life. That's what that I is. I don't have trauma. Yes, there. Yeah, you do. Uh, so here's listen to this theory. Uh, okay. What if ghosts? There are no ghosts. Ghosts aren't real. It's no. all in your. It's all in your head. No. 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 Listen to me. Oh. Okay. Consciousness is real. Like okay. We humans right. do something with our consciousness. Where we can. We can. We can send it out. Almost. You know. Okay. Uh, it goes with like manifesting things and okay. uh, perception of things like cryptids or ghosts okay. so the whole thing is like let's say there's a house there's a lot of trauma in the house like the family there's a lot of trauma within it mm -hmm. someone died within the house i don't know right. lots of trauma there okay so like that like psychic energy the, the trauma it was the residual so energy yes it like it's still in the house right it's not okay. no, nothing yeah. is there it's just sitting there it's just like sitting mm -hmm. there bubbling up someone walks into the house they have their own past traumas everyone's mm -hmm. got trauma mm -hmm. uh and if it's great enough uh, within them when they come in and they're looking for ghosts or you know they they, they you know or whatever maybe they're not they go into the house they have this trauma their consciousness with that with their like built up energy trauma mm -hmm. like it like resonates with this residual trauma energy is that's okay. in here and it's almost like a it's almost like the house is projecting Okay. A ghost for the person. It's not an actual like okay. physical. It's not a moving thing. It's not sentient. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a. It's almost like someone left, uh, the a film a reel, a film reel in the house, and there's like a and there's a screen. The house is a screen, like a white screen, like a movie screen. Mm -hmm. Left the, the film in there, mm -hmm. and then you walk in, and the film goes through your like consciousness, and right. like plays through like the light comes out of your eyes on the screen. Right. So like. Like that's why like not everyone sees ghosts, or some people see it more right. than others, and some people get like really affected by them with that weird mm -hmm. like feeling. Right. And so it's a uh, so they're not real. It's just like residual consciousness, just not waiting to be activated. But like it's not. It doesn't exist. Waiting until for the someone, right medium. It, it doesn't exist until someone comes in and makes it exist. Same thing with the particles. Like it's not. It's not there until someone looks at it, and then it's like, oh, now it's here. But those because, particles like, are real. Your consciousness activates it, right? So that makes it real. No, no, no. But it's not like a it's not like a thing. Like, oh, unfinished business. If you get rid of the unfinished finished business, it'll go away. It's just residual energy. It, maybe it's like radiation, like in Chernobyl, where right? In a millions of years, it'll just that energy will just dissipate and go away, At, maybe. right? But like, as, but like you know, it's strong right now, but it doesn't do anything to you. Unlike radiation, where like it, it could do something to you if you go up to it. Like no matter what, like it doesn't matter who you are. Any any living thing goes up to it, it's gonna cause you're you're dead. Radiation, that's what it does for sure. But two things: one, okay. if you're creating it in your own head, technically, like you could cause it could cause damage, right? I mean, there's definitely people that have like damage to their body, and it's all from their head. It's all like so the mind is a crazy thing that can possibly create reality. Um yeah. and then two, even back in your example, you said like in the it's a film it's a film reel, right? So mm. it's that residual. If you took that out though, you wouldn't have anything. So that piece alone is the ghost, right? It's yes. and yeah, it's a broad term for it, but we both agree. We're both saying that there is something. Yeah. And, you know, we just have slightly varying definitions. Yeah, it's, like, it, yeah, it's just like, it's like th there's something there, some sort of mm -hmm. energy, but like, there's just, yeah, it's hard to describe it. Oh, yeah. It's a, and it, honestly, I was talking to someone about this the other day. It could just be like something, some, another creature in a fourth dimension, just like, right. 
just pops in like, well, that's not the door I wanted. Like a cryptid, you know? yeah, exactly. You think a cryptid's well, from the fourth dimension? Well, that's what people think. Some people think that cryptids are either like other dimensional beings um, um that like that don't exist. The, the same sort of thing where like they could be energy or like, oh no, I heard something that was like uh that these like the like cryptids that we see like Bigfoot, Loch Ness and all this stuff, those are the ghosts of past animals that did exist on earth right they used to exist like dinosaurs uh but they died out and there's just like there's certain like pockets of their energy still left over in certain places and people same, same thing with the same with the ghosts like they, they people come in with their consciousness like with what they're expecting to see or hear or experience and that like resonates with that residual energy left over and that's why you're seeing like a Bigfoot, like a big, but like that's why you can't see it though. Yeah. And the footage is always bad. It's always bad. But there's also theories that like it's aliens, like aliens like send out these send down these projections of like cryptids of like Bigfoot. For what reason? To familiarize us with weird paranormal stuff, so that when aliens do show up, yep. we're not as freaked out when we see them. I like that. See, Isn't yep. that cool. I like that. Bring on the aliens. Yeah, and I feel like people are getting very familiar with it now. Oh, yeah, for so sure. cryptids aren't as scary. Uh, people are getting very used to alien sightings. I mean, the military, government talks about it now. Who knows? Yeah. Dude, speaking of aliens, do you think if aliens were com- actually confirmed real, if that would just debunk religion? <sighs> oh. No, like you think it would, yeah. but I don't think it will because people will just take it and be like, oh, because that's the whole thing of like, oh, angels were aliens or whatever. Like they came down from the heavens on a cloud when really it was like a spaceship that looked like a cloud. <laughs> and they were like, they, they're aliens, but they were aliens that made themselves look like humans, humans or whatever, or, you know, whatever they thought humans may look like. And that's why angels look kind of weird. But if you look at the Old Testament, or not the Old Testament, the book of John. Wait, John? Yeah, John the Baptist. Job? Revelations. Oh. Uh, no. Uh, alien, uh, an, aliens. Alien, uh, guys, I almost said it again. Angels ah. are described super creepy. Let me see if I can mm. pull it up real fast. It's awesome. It's awesome. Dude, It's you're going to be like, what the fuck? Moments later. Okay. Um... More moments later. Uh, around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come so they got like six wings and there's mm-hmm. eyes all over their bodies like all okay. over their bodies just covered in eyes it's mm. creepy and they just that could say, definitely be holy, like holy. a like a fifth or fourth dimensional creature you know with all those eyes i mean that's how they can see in all the different dimensions yeah it's weird well they have like ultimate perception or whatever i don't really know yeah uh they didn't really do them too well can you imagine like being in bed and then like one of those things comes down and is like, I'm going to impregnate you with the son of God. I'd be like, all right, just close some eyes first. Yes. Yeah, so there's too many eyes looking at you. <laughs> I would love to give birth to the Lord, our savior, Jesus Christ. I think that would be awesome. How would you do that? I would find a way. God finds a way. And that way is going to be probably opening up your penis and ripping it out. Or a C-section, I guess. First off, here's first wait, off. Wait, you'd have to grow a uterus, a womb, I guess. You have to grow a womb inside yeah. your body. That would be uncomfortable for you. Yeah, that would be uncomfortable. But I also delivered the Son of God. I feel like I have immunity from anything afterwards. Yeah, I guess I think... Mary did survive, and she yeah, like she and... got pretty big props for that. And if I'm having the son of god that means heaven is probably real therefore i automatically have a slot there that's a good point 
You know, I'm if, doing it for selfish reasons, so that might throw to, me in hell. Once but. Jesus, once the Son of God is born, do you have to like raise him to be the Son of God, or like does God? I don't just, like, think take Mary over? and Joseph did that good of a job. They just let him run around all the time. Well, they admit he was a carpenter. Oh, well, as an adult, but as a kid, I wasn't he just like running around to different like churches and stuff, and like you guys are wrong. You know, I actually don't know them much that much about the childhood of Jesus. Yeah, I don't think they talk about it too much. I just remember like a few he, stories I think of he was like just a normal kid. Yeah. And he was a carpenter. Yeah, actually, I don't remember. Did they tell Jesus that he was the son of... Like, does Jesus, like, walk around, like, on Christmas time? And he's like, oh, what's that cutout with the manger? What is that? Like, a baby and there's, like, animals around it? A mom and dad? What? What's that story? What's a baby being born in a manger? That's weird. Yeah. Like, did Mary and Joseph just never say that it was him? I guess. I don't know. Well, maybe he probably didn't know about it too much. That's what I'm saying is, like... Because he was born a Jew, so he didn't yeah. even celebrate Christmas. No, Wait, he, Christmas probably no. wasn't even a thing yet. Yeah, Christmas definitely wasn't a thing then. For I don't know. You'd think he'd be like Harry Potter. That Jesus is when Harry Potter you, be if like you wrote him. Jesus's childhood, you would write it like Harry Potter, where like he's a child, and then he gets to, he finds out that he's like this destiny yeah. destiny's child. Yeah, all three of all three of them, they're his child. Nice. Yeah, uh, or he's their child. And yeah, then he's like, yeah, then he's running around being like Jesus Christ as a kid, like walking around doing miracles. That'd be fun. Yeah, fun I want to know. That'd I want to know kids movie. Yeah, I kid want to know Jesus. <laughs> no, I kid would like Jesus. to know how he first figured out the water into wine trick because you know he accidentally got messed up. Oh off of yeah, wine. he got hammered. Yeah, dude. What if he it was like drunk. Midas? Like Midas's touch, where like everything he touched was gold, but then he like oh. he touched his like he like touched his daughter's face and then she turned to gold and then he tried to like, eat food but it turned to gold so he couldn't eat or drink anything what if that was like jesus and he actually he was like i'm trying to be sober but he every time he touches water it turns to wine as soon as it touches his lips he's like damn um, it <laughs> that would be funny but that would yeah be pretty funny um yeah man i don't know i just feel like um uh, yeah if if like I had a messenger of God come down, like, hey, um, I'm going to impregnate you with the Son of God, and I'm like, is it actually like, like the God I know? I'm just like, yeah, well, yeah. Which God is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which God is this going to be? Because that yeah. that is important. Yeah, is it like a Almighty God, or is it like a God of like a of like an island? God like, of I, paper I, clips. Yeah, I was like, like come oh, on, cool. He's like a nerd. Yeah. And just every room you open is just full of paper, paper clips. It's like you'll never have to worry about it again. I was like, I didn't, I didn't worry about it at all. Know. Actually, he's like, watch this, and he turns like a, a sky rise, like skyscraper, like it's metal. He turns it all into paper clips, and then everyone inside just like falls down because it can't support the weight of everyone. Yeah, and he's like, well, they're gonna fall on the paper clips, so it should be fine. But like, I feel like falling on paper clips probably wouldn't be very comfy. No, and what if it's just enough where it just pokes pokes you every little spot, just pokes you. Mm, that'd be a cool power. Shoot paper clips out of your hand. You could like that would be a cool power. Well, I'm thinking of oh, I'm thinking of like a bullseye from that Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck. He like yeah. has a paperclip and he like he like lengthens it like that, the paperclip or whatever, like straightens it in, like shoots it at that guy's neck. Yeah, that part's cool. I like that. Yeah. Part. Colin Farrell. I wish they. I hope they bring him back. I wish they would bring him back as Bullseye. Yeah, in some way because I think he's so, they might. So, he's a fun Bullseye. No, I think they already had a Bullseye in the Daredevil show. They had a. Oh, yeah. No, I'm thinking of Captain Boomerang from Suicide Squad. That's what I would want. I want to see... I mean, Captain Boomerang in Suicide Squad was fun. I want yeah, to see more Captain Boomerang. He's one of my favorite rogue gallery yeah. villains. Oh, yeah. Um, but no... And uh, that is a perfect example of what this show is right there. That Oh, yeah, just like... 10 minutes right there. We're here, then we're over here, then we're over here, 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 here. Uh, I want to go back to Kid Jesus, because Kid Jesus sounds so much fun. That's a fun story, I feel like. Just Harry Potter in ancient Babylonian times. Honestly, what could go wrong? I don't even, I can't wait. I'm going to keep reading that Kingstone Bible comics that I'm reading. And I really hope there's nothing about Jesus as a child. Because I'm taking full copyright on that. Done. Stamp it. Boom. I get it. Dibs. The church will come after you. Let them. They didn't get Dan Brown. He literally wrote that Jesus and like had a wife and kids and and the whole church was all fucked up. Oh, he's, yeah. still, he's still doing his thing. Dan Brown's True. fine. 
sure he has millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to fight against the church, but who cares? I'm so broke, they wouldn't even care. That's true. And then by the time they do care, when I have money, I'll have money. True. And I won't care. True. Kid Jesus is so good. I'm going to make it the new, like, young Indiana Jones, but better. Mm. When did they ever do a young Indiana Jones? Fucking some stupid time ago. I don't remember. Wow. I've seen it. I know it exists. I'm not going to watch it, though, because why would I want to watch that? It's because at the end of the third Indiana Jones with Sean Connery, the beginning of the movie, it shows Indiana Jones as a kid. The first, mm. like, artifact he recovered. Pretty dope. The Sean like Connery it. one's the third one? Yeah, uh, Return of the King. <laughs> uh, oh, That's the only Jones, one I've seen. Indiana Jones. Oh, wow. Quest for the Holy Grail? Yeah. And I haven't even seen all of it. I just know. I remember looking at Sean Connery, and my dad's like, that's Sean Connery. I was like, no, it's not. And then that was yeah, the end of that conversation. so Sean Connery. It doesn't look like. Not the oh. Sean Connery I know. I know the old Sean Connery. Oh, like James Bond Sean Connery? I don't know, like Hunt for Red October. That's not even young John. That's not even young John Connery. Hunt for no, Red I'm October. talking about old, old, old. But he's old in the third Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, but he looks different. He looks like Sean Connery. No, he, he sounds doesn't. Like Sean... He sounds like Sean Connery. I'll give you that. He sounds like him. He doesn't look like him though. What in my opinion, about? I don't know. I don't Your watch a lot of Sean Connery is either. Wrong, bro. Your opinions are yeah. wrong. If you would have said the James Bond Sean Connery, I would have been like, okay, I guess he was younger. I don't. Wa I haven't watched a lot of the James Bond ones either. I can't. You've never seen any any, any of the Indiana Jones movies? Not all the way through. No. Oh, the one with uh, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Oh fuck off, Jason. <laughs> the first one is the best one. So good. The first one is the best one. No, no, the no, the... no, no, no. <laughs> Not Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I cannot get past the first ten minutes of that movie. And as soon as he like, as soon as they show up to that warehouse, and he gets out of the car, and you see all those Russians, and he's just like, Russians. And you're like, you don't fight Russians, you fight Nazis. What the <laughs> fuck are we doing here? And plus, like, who wants to see Indiana Jones as a 70 year old man? Literally, no one in the world wants to know that. The whole point of Indiana Jones is he's a fantasy for guys. He's a fantasy. Not a sexual fantasy. <laughs> oh, the guy. I mean, he could be a sexual fantasy. He's a he Harrison Ford. A sexual guy. awakening. Yeah. Um, he's got that whip. <laughs> <laughs> Pew. Um, Pew. But no, it's like the whole thing is like he is like a badass ladies man. He's super smart. Knows all this stuff about history. You know how guys love ancient Rome. He's super into history. He goes around. He fucking cracks people with whips. Nazis of all people hits him with whips. Shoots a pistol. Gets the girl, like collects all this treasure, runs from traps. Dude, it's so badass. Like, no one wants to see Indiana Jones with a hip issue. That like ruins the whole illusion of him. He's like, it makes him a real person. It's like you don't want to see I don't I don't want to see Indiana Jones as a real person. Why why make him more human? He's not real anyway. It's a fantasy. Yeah. That's the thing, man. Like, everyone just wants wants them to be real or something like make everything realistic and it's just like why that's not the point yeah. of it you like they the the first movie is always like the super exciting like this guy's bigger than life and then they keep going with it until they like completely either like like the batman thing where they like make it to where like he's actually the bad guy like he actually has a lot of problems that aren't redeemable or they just like make them super normal and slow and boring like you always have to do like a prequel either make either make the character super old so they're not as like fun and fast and like cool anymore or you make them uh like you do a prequel like what they do with villains like joker and they're doing mm -hmm. napoleon where you got these like evil characters napoleon was a real person but uh and you like you show all of their background or you you create a background for them uh that like humanizes them so they're more relatable which i don't like either yeah. because they're villains yeah but i like a good like uh misunderstood villain like i like I a too. good villain i do too but there, i feel like there's a point where like you can almost like 
like what if what if that Dahmer movie or show would have been more human for Dahmer? Yeah. Like it's yeah, just I'd... I just think it like it definitely we're at a point now where like every villain has like some kind of like redeeming factor to them. Yeah. Like we don't have like any like oh this guy's just truly evil. Just a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to know anything else about him. Like Scar, yeah. Scar is evil. You know Scar is evil. You don't need to know yeah. why he blah blah blah. You it, he's a bad guy. It's a movie. Yeah. It's fun to make movies that are realistic, but also it's fun to make just fun stories that yeah. are easy to digest. Yeah, it's also fun to, like, have a villain that, you know, is good sometimes, but it's also fun just to have just, like, the most evil guy ever. It's just like, dude, yeah, well, someone like, stop him. Like Thanos. Yeah. Well, you gotta get a background on him. Well, he, hey, had, well, so he like, had a one, good, he had some redeeming factors to him, I think. One thing I always think of is Joker with Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix, which I loved. Didn't watch it. But, okay, but, uh... The Joker whole the whole thing with Joker is like in the Dark Knight when he's like all it takes is for society to get to where I am is like one bad day, and then they'll yeah. be as chaotic and you know, destructive and evil as I am. And Joker, the Joaquin Phoenix movie, it, it kind of shows you it's like Taxi Driver in a way where it's like it shows you this person who's like underrepresented, like just like not getting anything done shit on all the time and then like it's like it's them like redeeming their their life and like realizing how strong they really are but their strength comes from like anger towards society and them trying to like kill everybody or they're just like fuck it i'm gonna do my own thing pure chaos watch the world burn Mm -hmm. and i just don't like that it's it's well that that's kind of scary that mindset because makes it a fun villain if the person is relatable enough, I can oh, see yeah. someone watching it and um, following through with like, like they're like, oh, pers- like relating to it and being like, yeah. I should be like that. I should or be, I like, could the be like that. Yeah. I could be, I could be the Joker. And it's like, no, you don't want to be the Joker. He's so that's evil. why you're saying don't make it relatable enough. You can, yeah, I mean, you can show like character flaws within the character, but like, I just feel like character like joker is just so like the whole point is that he's like crazy he's a crazy he's super sane super super insane in the membrane i thought his superpower was he super sane super saiyan no no super sane what about the joker he's actually not crazy he's actually the most sane person ever that's just an excuse (laughs) that's an excuse to use no. There's no way. He just says that to make himself feel better. Because hmm, he's maybe. been so isolated in his life, hating on all these people and killing them. No one wants to hang out with him anymore. So he's like taking the power for himself and saying, you know what? I don't want to hang out with any of you crazy people because you're the ones who are crazy, not me. I'm saying you guys are insane. You know who talks like that? Crazy people do. True. Crazy people say that. I'm going to prove how sane I am. I'm going to kill that child. A crazy person thinks like that. Batman beats the shit out of him every night, and he's like, he loves me. And it's like, no, it's because he killed that kid. Batman also doesn't kill his victims, but Batman isn't too sane either. No, no. But he, he, again, he's he's dealing with his uh, character flaw, his trauma with violence and aggression. Yeah. Yeah. He's stopping the bad guys. But is he really? Because he's actually, yeah. he's only just feeding his own delusion of his, his heroism because he's not killing these bad guys. He's not stopping them. He's just throwing them in jail. And they break out. He finds them again. So he's actually like keeping his own cycle going, his own vicious cycle moving subconsciously. Yeah. Because he's like, I'm doing a good thing. I'm cleaning, up, I'm cleaning up Gotham. When really, no, you're not. You're filling up the prisons. So that's like less tax dollars for the normal people, which means... Less, less money for normal people means more people are going to fall into poverty, which means they're going to fall into crime. So then there's more crime. And also the people that you arrested and beat up probably going to get off because you gave them like horrible bodily injuries. And you're just a vigilante. Uh, you're mm-hmm. not a police officer. Uh, so they get, uh, they get appealed. They can get out of uh, jail. And now there's like, now there's even more prisoners. I don't know. 
I'm not saying Batman should kill people. I just feel like there could be a better solution to this. Maybe rehabilitation instead of incarceration. Maybe mm-hmm. Batman should like teach the prisoners karate on the weekends. Maybe Why? they learn they learn some self discipline. You know, maybe they like maybe or they just can make themselves stronger on the streets. Well, he can create. He can he can put maybe Bruce Wayne can put in some fucking funding to the prisons. You mean Batman. So oh that, uh, yeah. So that they can get like better rehabilitation services and mental health services uh, instead of having a fucking like four hundred year old mental asylum for super criminals. Maybe maybe that mental asylum instead of just holding them in cages, maybe they should go to therapy. Maybe, maybe. get a pool ball, a pool table, foosball. That'd maybe be fun. That'd be fun. I mean, what are we doing here? You can't just throw Not someone in jail that. in a room by themselves for ten years and expect them to be better at the end of it. True. Yeah. So True. maybe a pretty smart show after all. I think we know what we're talking about. I can't wear these. A the glare on the on the screen annoys me, so I can't wear them. Hmm. Yeah, they look good. Thank you. They're my blue light blocking glasses. They have like nice. a little bit of tinted yellow. Ah, they I help like me with that. my eyes. But I, I wish I had actually like more. Wish they were stronger. Yeah, oh. yeah, just wish they were more yellow tint because then I could look like Hunter S. Thompson more. I need to get like those big like, what do you call not radiators? <laughs> what do you call those? Those those big Circles? sunglasses. Oh, aviators. A- <laughs> aviators. Yeah, I don't want radiators on my face. Uh, yeah, that'd burn. <laughs> well, I think we could be up to our segment here. Our little segment on the show. If you want to move on to that, Mason. Our segment? Oh, yes, 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 yeah. The What Would You Do? What Would You Do? Nice, yeah. See that? That's the kind of music you can get from off the path yeah yeah we're gonna have a high album. streaks we're gonna have a new album come out next week so get ready for that that's a lie don't, don't believe me on that one uh okay mason today's what would you do we're gonna talk about amanda eller okay she got lost in a forest on maui in hawaii Ooh. okay yeah uh which i didn't even really think i don't really know how big hawaii is i know yeah, i feel like that. you could find your Way, yeah, eventually. Like, wouldn't be too hard to find. Maui is just yeah. one of it's one of the islands. So, yeah. uh, she became lost on a hike in the Mac Macawao Forest Reserve on Maui, May eighth, okay. twenty nineteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she was rescued on the twenty fifth of May. Okay, so six days later. Yep, yeah, by a helicopter who saw her. Uh, walking barefoot between two waterfalls and waving her arms. It was just, the encounter was described as unbelievable. Couldn't believe that they were able to get so lucky enough to find her right there. Oh, okay. Uh, she fractured her leg while hiking. Mm. Oh no. Um. And it was because it took so long to find her. The family actually suspected foul play, and they okay. were offering a fifty thousand dollar reward. Or her oh, discovery. Okay. Yeah, they thought like they thought something really fucked up happened. Uh, mm-hmm. They found her two weeks after she was gone, or reported missing. Minor injuries, fifteen pounds lighter. Otherwise, pretty stable. She actually did okay. Yeah, I feel like Maui would would be an okay place to get lost because I feel like the temperature at least wouldn't be a too big of a factor. Yeah, they said the. Uh, I don't know what the animal situation is though on one Maui. of one of the like the rescuers said he attributed her ability to survive and to to in her her love of nature is how she survived uh her he said her career as a physical therapist as well as knowledge of mm-hmm. yoga techniques of and of the local vegetation are what saved her life so honestly mm-hmm. Mason, I think what you would need to do for this is just um start eating your vegetables and stretching more. Well, it looks like I'm going to die then. Yeah, this wasn't a ploy for that, but kind of is. You should mm. eat your vegetables more and stretch. You really should. Yeah, just... I, sh- I probably should. Stretching I was talking is to your important. doctor. I was talking to your doctor the other day. He was really upset about you not eating. Yeah, your veggies, I haven't so. seen him in five years. So he, he will. Yeah, that's why he called me. He was asking where you were. Uh, I want to die. Uh. Eat your vegetables. Eat vegetables. <laughs> quick, stretch, <laughs> stretch, 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 stretch,
So, sir, I need you to touch your toes now. I can't okay. do that. Ugh. Okay, Sorry, so anyway, continue. You get okay, so here's the what would you do, Mason? If you were you were on a hike yeah. in a forest reserve on Maui. Mm-hmm. Um I guess she was by herself. That's crazy. Actually, this article doesn't actually say if she was by herself. We'll just assume she was, because okay, any- here's here's what happened. Here so she she wandered deep in the Makawa M- Makawao Forest Reserve after she fractured her leg while hiking. So she fractured her leg. Oh man! And then just kept walking, hmm. and she walked, I guess, in the wrong direction. So let's say you're on a hike in the forest. You trip down a hill twist your ankle real bad yeah what do you do now you're by yourself yeah so if i can't like get any cell phone reception or anything which i'm assuming she couldn't like i'm assuming that's half the reason her cell phone broke or something um and i like if i hurt my leg too bad i feel like i would have to pick a direction and just start walking um maybe try to make some crappy uh like like splint or something for my leg just to keep it straight maybe find a big stick to like keep some weight off of it and just keep walking until like it started getting close to dark and then find a good area to kind of rest up against and like mark a tree to know which direction i was going in that um, and then just idea. and then just keep going until you find something the worst yes. part is you're going to find the edge of the island, and then there's, you have to pick another direction. But at least yes. you have the edge, and you can go, like walk on the edge. But I, I think you just think have to that. keep. I feel like you just have to keep moving. And like I said earlier, I feel like temperature wouldn't be too big of an issue. I don't know the animal situation though. Um, so like I don't really know what you're fighting against. Uh, I don't know how long it would take to if you're going in one direction to find something. So if you're hiking though, you probably have some water. You probably have some food of some kind yeah so. yeah uh let me show you this woman amanda eller since so she lost 15 pounds uh while she was here here's let me see if this will work here's her <laughs> that's weird how it kind of works okay yeah she's a cutie there we go that, you can you that's can, weird i don't yeah, know why yeah, it yeah. looks like that but that's yeah, what she looks like sense. Yeah. and then uh let me see if this will work now i can get this Oh, come on. Ah, yeah, it looks like it. she lost some weight there. Yeah. Let me see if I can get it pulled up on this side. Three hours later. This right here. Um, Wait, there we go. This right here. That's her before. And then here's her when she got found. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. So she probably had a good idea, though. It looks like she found water and probably stayed close to water. So that's probably that's probably the smarter idea and just wait to get found. But I don't think I'm ever waiting to get found. Like, I think when you're lost, you're supposed to stay in one spot. Yeah, but I feel like, dude, I don't think I could. I would mean, you just got to lay down and just yell. You know, what kind of what kind of wildlife would you find on Hawaii, though? Are there like snakes and stuff? I'm sure there's some kind of snake. Probably. I don't think there's I don't. I I don't know if there's anything too dangerous on it. I mean, dude, I'm so dumb. I would probably for, for at least a little bit. I would think like, what if a cannibal tribe finds me? But I'm on. Then I'd be like, I'm on Hawaii. <laughs> it's very much discovered already. Yeah, very much contacted. I don't think I'm gonna find yeah. any. Yeah, I mean, I guess in the situation like this, I just I don't know how big this forest resort. I mean, it's a forest, so I'm sure it's big. But you're on Maui, so. How long, unless you wandered off the path, uh, or yeah. something like that, <laughs> I just can't imagine being lost what was that for park two called? weeks. Uh, the Makawao, M-A-K-A-W-A-O, Forest Reserve. Makawao? Makawao? Uh, size. Uh, it's 2,000 acres. Okay, that's pretty big. I think that's you're probably right that is big, but I feel like so I mean, but that's all together. So you wouldn't be able like if you just picked a direction, 
it wouldn't be too bad, right? My guess is she probably was walking on a trail. Like that someone would if she would have hurt herself on the trail, she probably would have been found pretty quick. Yeah. But I think she may have fallen. I don't this doesn't say anything, this article I have. I, I wonder if there's other articles that say more. Um but I w- I'm wondering if she like tripped and fell down a hill or like fell off the path a little bit and then uh-huh. when she composed herself and she hurt her ankle, she was probably laying down messing with that. And then when she finally got up, she kinda didn't know which way to go back to where she came from where she fell and then just was like oh, i'm gonna choose this direction to walk in and then she just yeah. ended up walking like she was maybe like close to the edge of the forest and she ended up walking deeper into the forest i don't know yeah that would suck two weeks it wouldn't be fun yeah especially on hawaii because you're thinking of hawaii you're like oh tourism and like you know there's always people there on you know tourists and stuff yeah, and that looks like, like it's the second biggest island, too. All the people walking around on that forest reserve while she's, like, wandering lost within it. Yeah. Like, I assume she called for help, but, like... Yeah, I'm sure help. she did, too, but it could be super thick, too. I mean, like, yeah. looking at the pictures, like, there's probably not a lot of ways sound, like, actually escapes it because it's bouncing off of all the trees and crap fucking trees always making it harder for us humans to live oh it's beautiful Mm -hmm. yeah it does look nice um man that would suck yeah i mean i guess i mean what do you think wander away like try to find your own way out or just wait and hope someone finds you i would probably just pick a direction and start walking i was looking at that though and if she picked the wrong direction she's just falling more into other nature preserves so like just that nature preserve alone was 2000 oh. there's other areas like there's more mountains and stuff to the west of there yeah i think if i was no east of there so like she had to travel like pretty much north uh east or south to hit like a coast or a city interesting if she kept if she kept walking west or east then she would have been screwed Hmm. Um, interesting so yeah i guess just just don't just don't go outside yeah i wouldn't go on a hike personally don't go on a hike yeah you got they got stationary bikes now you got yeah. treadmills. You don't need that. So Peloton. Yeah. Walk the block. Walk Peloton's the block. Peloton's got a those. Times. Got those TV screens on them now. That makes it look like you're walking outside. Yeah. So, I don't know, Amanda. Maybe try that next time. You know. Good night. Jeez, Louise. Uh, no, that that is really scary. I don't. Hey, I don't know what I would do. I guess I would. I'd Kudos to her like, though for surviving. Like, yeah, I, awesome. That's awesome. If I was if I was in there for two weeks, I would not have been as good a shape as she was. It sounds so. like luckily she was a physical therapist. Yeah. yoga teacher and she knew about like local vegetation and that's good she too it sounds what... like she needed that to survive yeah because I, I feel like i won't i don't know that much about plants me neither so like the whole like poison berries healthy berries i don't know the differences yeah so i'm probably I don't eating, know... just trying to kill something and eat it yeah i would like... just try to eat i would just start eating bugs yeah i'd be like is this me a too. poison ant probably not yeah i don't I, I don't think poison. ants are poison but you don't, like, you don't want to eat. You don't want to eat a fire ant, though. That would. Nah, I like a little spice. That's the spice to meet the ball. <laughs> they did. Oh God, no! You would. Oh my God. Ah, it bit, what if it bites your tongue, or any part of your mouth? Man. Then you're probably gonna die because it's gonna swell. Maybe. I think you're thinking of bullet ant. There's ants you can shoot guns out of. No, but their bite is so strong that it feels like you're getting shot by a bullet. Oh. Yeah, they're not. What that that tribe that like they put on gloves that are filled with like fire ants. Fuck that. Yeah, I already know mm-hmm. I'm a man. That's why I like in our culture, you turn 18 and you're a man. You don't have to do yeah. like a fucking glove full of fire ants. Yeah, you, know, you just have to sign up for the draft. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So everyone, if you get hurt in the woods, just just chill out. I say, I say, just chill out. I wouldn't worry about oh, it too boy. much. If you're bleeding yeah. out, actually, if you're bleeding out, it's probably not what you can do movement wise. But no, I guess just start screaming. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what else. I mean, call for help. Yeah, check your surroundings. You know, 
don't just start wandering off if you don't know where to go. And if you have a map and a compass, you know, maybe you can start wandering. You can start wandering in, one, in, a, in a direction that appears to be going out of the forest. Yeah. That's the main thing. You want to get out of the forest because helicopters can't see shit with those trees. Yeah, maybe find where you're hiking and find the closest, like, uh, town or whatever. Landmark or something. Note that direction, and because you can at least figure out the direction of the sun, and so you can have, yeah. like, an idea. Ah, the trees, uh. though. Yeah. If it's midday, the trees might make it really hard. But if but... there's moss on the tree, they grow on the north side. That's not 100% true. Uh... Damn. I think I mean it's true, but I don't think it's a hundred percent true. I think it's sometimes moss can grow in other ways, but I could be wrong about that. Um, we're not professional lost nope. people. I mean, we're professional no. at being lost, but we're not professionals at like yeah. guiding people from the. We can get you lost, but we don't. It's gonna be hard for us to get you out of that. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, we don't really know how to do that. So yeah, because we do it all the time. We always get lost. We always just end up circling back yeah yeah um but yeah okay i think we're at the end of our path or i think we're not at the end of a path we did we find the path i think we were on a path or two and then you know what we're lost so we're just gonna stay put Mm -hmm. pick it up next week that's what we'll do we're not gonna go wandering around because if we wander around too far uh we might go deeper into the woods and you don't know what's gonna happen when we get out there it's probably gonna be something to do with cannibalism because uh, it always does, but mm-hmm. yeah. So we're just gonna try and stay put as much as we can for next week, and then next week we should be good to go to find our path, we we'll find our directions. And I'm almost certain we won't in the middle in the middle of this week we won't just wander out in the middle of the woods. I swear we'll stay right here. Promise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, journey of off the path uh, with Van and Mason. I'm Van. I'm Mason. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, let us know on the Mellowbrook Road page. Uh, next week, we're going to bring Mellowbrook Road back, uh, so don't worry about that. Trace and, and or Kenny, or both, we don't know yet. Uh, those two were wild cards. Uh, they'll be back, and we'll all be together, and we'll do this normal Mellowbrook Road episode. But uh, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Uh, you can listen to all the Off the Path episodes on your favorite podcasting app, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the other ones. Um, if you want to watch the video, this video is available on YouTube, Spotify. What's up? How's it going? First, uh, you know, public video episode, I guess. I guess. Um, but the uh, all the other episodes of this are all on the Mellowbrook Road Patreon page, Patreon.com/slash Mellowbrook Road. So you can check them all out there, as well as our other shows, behind the scenes stuff, all that fun, all that fun jazz. Um, yeah, Mason, any final words uh, for the people before we leave? When in doubt, stick it out in the same spot if you're lost. I like it. I like it. All right, everybody. Uh, Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Mellow manifestations. Stay safe out there. And don't eat the albatross soup. All right. Wasn't that fun? Was that a fun time? I hope it was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. We were a little bit sleepy, but, you know, what are you going to do? We're busy guys. We're always doing things that are uh, 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 energy using. Right? We're always using our energies because we're so dang energetic. Except for this episode because we weren't. <sighs> anyway, I uh, hope you really enjoyed the episode. Uh, like I said, uh, all the Off the Path episodes are on Patreon, patreon.com slash Road. Let us know what you think of this episode because um, we want to keep doing it. We have a good time doing it. It's a good way for us to vent. Sorry about that noise. Uh, and, yeah, you know, maybe if, if enough people like it, maybe we'll put it out into the public... F- full you know fully uh the, the videos on youtube because right now like i said at the beginning uh all the videos are on patreon mellowbrook road patreon.com slash mellowbrook road all the audio is available everywhere you get your podcasts uh so you can still listen to the episodes but if you want to watch mason and i make silly faces at each other please uh let us know and we will adjust accordingly like i said before uh that's the end of the episode i hope you guys enjoyed it we'll be we'll probably do this again uh later in the future maybe we'll do one with what you're reading uh in the future as well so just be on the lookout for that uh i'm gonna, I'm gonna say it one more time let us know what you think of the episode um Melbrook road path number 85 we'll be back next week we're gonna have the whole crew so don't worry about that it should be a lot of fun uh everybody that should be the end of the episode so yeah 
See you later. Have a good one. Mellow Manifestations.